We were out on patrol one time. We got in one H-E-W-Q of a firefight, and I was in a, well, we got through the firefight and we're walking down between, I don't know if you know what elephant, what is it called, elephant grass? Yeah, mm -hmm. big tall, mm -hmm. right, yeah. 900 foot tall stuff that cuts you. That's what it felt like anyway. And uh, next thing I know, I've got a hand over my mouth and I'm jerked off the trail. And I go, well, I'm dead. <laughs> you know, I mean, what else are you going to say? Yeah. But we were walking so far apart in that elephant grass, none of the Marines knew I was gone until we got through that field. Jeez. Oh, so I'm drug into this little hut in some little province with a bag over my head, a uh, stinky bag too, I think they've been hauling in the works. Oh. Like, oh Lord, I'll never forget that smell. And uh, I'm on my knees and I'm thinking, well, you know, God, I hope I'm ready. And I hope I've been good enough to come up and not go down. And uh, next thing I know, I get a rifle butt in the back and I'm perfect English, this guy says, don't try to the four letter word, F with me. This is going to be, I don't want my kids to know I cuss. <clears throat> uh, because I was, I was uh, educated at UCLA. And I thought, oh boy. So off comes the bag and there's a guy laying there, a body, basically he was dead, although his heart was still beating. And, he, and the guy indicated, as long as he's alive, you're alive. I mean, it was not any, you know. And he left, thank God, because he was a smart one in the group. And he left me with, with three men, villagers, and one woman. And they had my 45, and they had... Uh, so also, you, as a corpsman, you carried you carried I weapon? carried a 45. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. I couldn't get inside this room with it well, before I went with the Marines. But it turned out to be a pretty good shot. The Marines worked it over for me, so you pulled the trigger and once you fired off six shots pretty quick because they filed a sear or something. I, I had never a small arms person, but, but uh, anyway, and their whole net, they've got, well, they don't, they had that on the table and they had three rifles on me. So I tell them what I was doing, even though I don't think any of them spoke English, and I certainly didn't speak enough Vietnamese to, you know, other than chow bong, which is good morning, and that's about it. And uh, so I'm working on it. The first thing I thought, well, if this guy is this important, you know, he's going to die anyway. So I covered him up with a, a big bandage, you know, a big you know, gut bandage, as we called them, that they were wraparound bandages. And I always carried a little mirror. I don't know why I would carry a little mirror with me, but I always had a little mirror in my medical bag. And, uh, I had my stethoscope and my blood pressure cuff. Uh, I always carried them on the back in case somebody went in heat stroke. I wanted to have those available so I knew. Even though we were out in the field, I didn't have to carry some of that stuff, but I did. And my other corner different things. So we could we couldn't do surgery out there, but we could darn sure do quite a lot more than than having nothing, so to speak. So the next thing I know I get another rifle in my back and, and I showing them up on the little morphine squeeze things. I told I said, I gotta get in this because of the pain. I went like this, you know, and the, the gal went like this. She knew what I was talking about, I think. But so I gave him four shots of morphine, knowing it would kill him, because I figured, you know, if he's this important, I don't know who he is, but I'm not going to help him in any way, although I knew he was going to die. Mm -hmm. In fact, probably moving him around to put that battle dressing on him killed him. But, so anyway, I, I could take the mirror and hold it under his nose, and I'd go like that, and it would fog a little bit, and not take a blood pressure, and I can take a blood pressure, you know, with the... So after about 12 hours, my wonderful dirty, stinky Marines came back and found me. And uh, we got in another hell of a firefight. And uh, I had three, three of my Marines were wounded out in the middle of the field. And I was really protected of my corpsmen too, because they were all young guys. You know, and I thought, Damn it, you know, they need a chance at my But I was 28. Yeah. And I didn't know I had this martyr syndrome, you know, no way was I out there looking to get shot, but, so I, I never asked them to do anything I wouldn't do, and so I just grabbed my pack and ran out to a little The one guy lives in Tennessee, DeVries, and he was shot, he was shot through the gut. So I'm putting um, battle dressing on him, and I said, and he was still pretty lucid. I said, can you raise your leg so that I can get these underneath you, and push your butt up. As he did that, I feel this, 
on my stomach, and I looked down, and I'm just covered with blood. I thought, well, I've just been shot. It doesn't hurt. Huh. Well, what had happened, he put his leg up. The bullet that would have got me in the stomach got his ankle. Oh, and so, so he saved my life, although he claims that I saved his life. And I uh, had two other ones out there. Well, then we were getting a lot of heavy fire from around the area. So I said, two of the Marines were, were well, they were all wounded, but they weren't out of it enough that they couldn't hear. I said, all right, load the rifles, guys. I said, I can't get you out of here now. So I said, I'm doing my damnedest to try to keep you protected. And so I did, and I picked up the rifles and fired, and being a gunner's mate didn't hurt. Uh, you know, kind of reverted back. <laughs> so, so anyway, and you can read that in that citation in there I got from the president. The Silver Star? The Silver Star, yeah. yeah wow. I had that in there. And uh, which I didn't, I didn't do anything more than I was trained to do. You know, that's, that's, Marine says, well, Doc, we're putting you in for the, for the Navy for, well, they put me in for a Bronze Star once and I refused it. I said, this is bullshit, I'm doing my job. You know, I'm, I, I don't want it, I don't need it, you know. Give me another rank, I'll take that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, that, that went one way. But anyway, um, then they put me in, they said, we're putting you in for the Navy Cross. And I said, bullshit, I'm not going to. Charlie, here's your citation for your Silver Star. If you don't mind, I'm going to read it out loud simply because it won't pick up on the, on the tape. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action while serving with Company C, 1st Battalion, 3rd Marines, 3rd Marine Division near the village of La, La Chao. Republic of Vietnam on 5 June 1965, while giving medical aid to several sick villagers, Hospital Corpsman Campion was attacked by other villagers at the same time that his platoon was attacked by the Viet Cong. Finding his way free, he ran to the platoon position and immediately began medical treatment of two wounded Marines. In order to protect the wounded men, Hospital Corpsman Champion seized the automatic rifle from one of the men and turn it against the enemy, killing one Vietnam, Viet Cong and driving the others to, to flight. After these men were evacuated, he fiercely exposed himself to heavy enemy fire so that he could render aid to a critically wounded Marine and assist in his evacuation. By his daring actions and loyal devotion to duty in the face of personal risk, Hospital Corpsman Campion, Campion upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, A.R. Cryer, Major General, U.S. Marine Corps, Acting Commanding General.